In this lecture, I'd like to discuss something known as an energy method. So we've been solving a number of simple one-dimensional deformable body problems using the concepts of equilibrium, kinematics, material response. And that gives us a very full and complete picture of the mechanical response of a system. But sometimes you don't need all of that information. You only have one question that you're asking, and maybe there's a more direct way of getting that information. And Energy, energy methods provide us uh, one of, a tool of that fashion. So let's consider an elastic system that's subjected to conservative loads. And such systems conserve energy. And what I mean by that is that the work that you put into them by deforming them is stored in the system elastically, so within the, the bonds of, of the material between the atoms. Okay, And we can actually use this principle to develop a method that allows us to solve for certain types of information in deformable mechanical problems. So let's consider our canonical problem. So it's just a 1D bar. It has a force P on the end. And there'll be a deflection out there at the other end of the bar. And I'd like to sort of determine the relationship between P and delta. And I'm going to use this idea of work in equals work stored. So the first thing I'm going to do is develop a general relationship. And then I'll go ahead and apply it. So let's start first with thinking about what's going to happen when we apply this load. As we apply the load P, uh, we start with zero force, and we slowly increase the force. So we have F. It starts at zero, and we start increasing the force until we get to the value of P. As we increase the force, there's going to be a motion at x equals L, and that's going to be increasing until we reach the value of delta. Now, in general, the response curve is going to be some curve. It won't necessarily be a straight line. And the area under this curve is the work in. So the integral from 0 to delta of the force with respect to the motion at the end of the bar gives us the work into the system. Now, if the material happens to be linear elastic, this response curve is actually going to be a straight line. And so if it's a straight line, this integral is really easy. It's just the area of the triangle under the straight line. So the work in is equal to 1 half p times delta. So we get a very nice, simple expression to use for work in if we have linear elastic materials. And that's what we're going to restrict our attention to. But in general, you have to use this more complicated expression with the integral. Now, the work stored, let's look at the work stored on a per unit volume level. So the area times the length of the bar is the volume of the bar. So I, if I divide the work stored by AL, I'll have the work stored per unit volume. We'll call that little w. Now, we, have, we know by conservation that work in equals work stored. So I can take the expression for work in and divide it by A and L. And I'm going to bring the A and L underneath the integral sign. So I'll put the A underneath the force. And I'll put the L under the motion at the end of the bar. Well, the force divided by the area is just the stress. And the motion at the end of the bar divided by the length is just the strain. So this integral can actually be written as integral from 0 to the total strain that you end up with of the stress as a function of the strain integrated with respect to the strain. If the material is linear elastic, well then this also gives us a simple straight line relationship between sigma and epsilon. And so we have for the value of the integral, we have 1 half sigma epsilon, or 1 half sigma squared over e, or also 1 half e times epsilon squared. So we have a number of different expressions that we can use for the stored energy density little w. And putting it together, we have this relationship now, that 1 half p delta is equal to the integral over the volume of the body of 1 half sigma epsilon. And now the question is, how can we exploit this relationship to solve particular problem. So we'll go ahead and do that with a set of two simple examples.